Hopefully, you have all started to harvest some produce from the allotment. What I have here are gooseberries. In this bowl, we have a combination of Hinamaki green, yellow and red. You can see the red ones have ripened and have become that beautiful shade of red. What we're going to do this afternoon, very quickly, is to show you how to make a gooseberry pickle or gooseberry a jar. The ingredients are as follows. Please note that the only thing grown on the allotment at the moment is this. Otherwise, you might have also had some chilies as well. The ingredients are as follows. About half a pound-ish of gooseberries. We have some root ginger, which I've julienned into thin strands. We've got about eight to ten red finger chilies. Again, if you've grown these on the allotment, there's no reason why you can't use them. We have in this, we have the spices, we have fennel, we have onion seed, and we have fenugreek. This is going to be accompanied by salt, chilli powder, asfetida, which is probably going to smell halfway to hell. We've also got some jaggery gore, which is natural cane sugar. Why? Well, gooseberries, as you are aware, are very tart, and they're quite you know, sour really, and if you were cooking with them, you would have to use pound by pound of sugar. We're going to use a saucepan here to cook them off. The preserving agents, I guess, other than the actual salt, is going to be mustard oil. We're only going to, we've already got a couple of teaspoons in the pan, and we're also going to add some vinegar as well. So you just have to excuse me whilst I hand over the camera to my mum. Mum, you got your finger over the thumb. There you go. Got it? Okay. So at some point mum might jump in and rescue me, but she's going to be the camera woman for now. So we're going to put, turn the hob on, she says. You don't want to burn this, do we mum? Nope, she's shaking her head at me. So first things first, we're going to put all the spices in. So as I say, we've got in here, we've got the soft seeds, which are the fennel, we've got the fenugreek, and we've got onion seeds. I didn't really want to put in mustard seeds. Mustard seeds traditionally the seed that you would associate with the curry taste of any Indian dish. And um, often when I make these preserves, I get, did you put curry in it? Well, no, no, I didn't. So these are going in, and they're going to be tempered. It's going to be cooked through lightly and covered with the oil. And as I said before, you don't really want to burn them. You want to make sure that the oil in there has the flavours infused. And in time, they are going to coat and cook on the gooseberries. And depending on what you've got in your allotment, you can moderate how much you're gonna, how much spice you want. That amount of chilies might, for some people, be very excessive. And the idea is that the flavour infuses and carries through everything else that you're putting in. The mustard itself is also very strong. So, hopefully, these are all coated. How long do you reckon, Mum? Few minutes, she says and that is on a fairly moderate heat. You will know if you burn things because it will start to smell of burnt toast and the oil will start to change colour as well. Isn't that right, Mum? Yep, I'm having nods on the end of the camera. So, it is starting to bubble and everything is distributed around. The base that you use, it's entirely up to you what spices you want in, but this is a traditional pickle mix if you like. You can also get the pickles from the Asian supermarkets. They're fairly easy to get a hold of. So, gooseberries, I'm getting the nod. So here, as I mentioned to you before, we have a combination of different gooseberries. They are all Hinamaki gooseberries. And mum did say that all we want is a touch of heat. The chemistry itself is going to occur in the jar when we jar these up later. And we just want to tenderise them. These have all been picked in a, a state, well, semi-ripe. Those that were ripe are quite fleshy and squishy to the touch. And if you were to bite into one, you'd probably pull a face. The oil should now cover all of the gooseberries and you can start to see everything is covering the seeds now. So as I said, we've got a mixture of fennel seeds, onion seeds and fenugreek. It's the same fenugreek that you can use on the allotment as a green manure. What I'm now going to add is the rest of the spices, Mum. She's looking too waving at me. What am I doing? Am I stirring again? Okay, all right, some bumps inside and then we're going to swap. So she's handed me chili, apatita, the garlic and the salt. Oh, and she's flinging in everything else as well. So 
In we have the chilli and the ginger. Cook it through, let it infuse. A couple more minutes, love, and then we add vinegar. Yep. Oh, you need haldi as well. Hold that for two seconds. The one thing I forget. A lot of the pickles have a golden colour. And what we're going to do is add some of this turmeric. We're going to add how much? Funny. Tell me. Spoon. What do you need? How much do you reckon? Two seconds. We've got approximately. Funny. It's about a quarter of a teaspoon, but we need more. We're not done yet. Okay, so about a quarter inch of a teaspoon. We're stirring with the turmeric, it will stain you, it will stain everything else as well. And this does make the gooseberries become a little more golden. So we've got the haldi, the turmeric in there. Apparently gooseberries are full of vitamin C and the turmeric with its anti-inflammatory properties make this all rather he healthy for you. So to recap, we had a mixture of seeds, We've had the gooseberries themselves, again a variety. We've got the roots ginger, it's about three centimetres cubed in there. And we've also had some fresh red bird's eye chilies. What we now need to add, oh, and aspidida as well, amongst other things. We now need to add the vinegar. That's already gone in. So, the vinegar that we're gonna be using is just distilled malt vinegar you can get from your supermarket. We don't want this to be too squishy, but we do want this whole thing to break down. When you eat the gooseberries, they should be fleshy and not squishy, and they should still retain some of their tartness, with the vinegar preserving the spices and helping the flavour infuse through. So, a good dollop of this stuff, Mum. There you go. That's it. Right, so now, as you can see, we've got a liquidy base now. So I'm taking the camera up. We're going to turn the heat up a little bit, Mum. As you would with a chutney, let it simmer down and reduce. Key again is not preventing it from, well, to prevent it from burning, keeping it stirred. You don't want to squish the raspberries. Raspberries? Wrong dish. Gooseberries. But you want them to be simmering down. The idea is that we cook this through and we let it stew down. Mum said, don't make it too soft. If What happens if it's too soft? They explode. No. What happens? It's squat. These are tail like these. Okay. So if you squish them, soft more done there. That means they just, well, they get soft. It's like the jam then. It's like jam? Mm -hmm. This is not jam though, is it? Yeah, but it will turn into jam, that's it. Spiced gooseberry jam. Oh, is that it? That's it. Okay, that will be it. Put them like this. We're now going to put these into some jam jars. This is a small batch, so I don't expect many jam jars. Simple, straightforward. That is spiced gooseberry jar. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day.